Hey everyone, it's Tox from Crits Happen. Thanks so much for watching and welcome back. Today we have something new. Today I am going to walk through a review of Istanbul, the digital edition. This is developed by Akram Digital and this is on the Nintendo Switch, as you can see, which is a first for us. Uh, going through and just selecting some of the options for uh, adding players, uh, randomly adding players and things like that right now. Uh, you have the option when you set up this game to uh, do a couple of different settings. You can do uh, random, you can do short paths, long paths, which is really cool, which we'll all talk about in a second. But first off, I'd like to thank Akram Digital. They provided me a copy of this on the Switch to be able to record and share with you. Some of this may be a little choppy from time to time because the way the Switch records is kind of weird. It only does it in like 30 second spurts. Um, but here's what I can tell you. This game is available on digital devices and it is now available on the Switch and I absolutely love it in all of its forms both board game physical and what Akram has done digital. Now, Istanbul is, I hesitate to say worker placement game, but it is t kind of worker placement game. It is a board game that was made by Alderac Entertainment Group in 2014, one of the premier board game companies in the industry right now. Uh, Ruder Gerdorn is the designer. He's also designed one of my favorite dice games of all time, which is Las Vegas. This one, though, is not a dice game. This, while well, there are some dice involved, this one is primarily, it's a game about being a gem merchant or gem collector. Your object is to collect five gems. You're going to do that by visiting different locations inside of this city. And you saw at the beginning that there was like uh, some setup to the 4x4 grid. Uh, this is kind of one of the cool things that they've done on the digital side. On the physical side, it can take a little bit of time to set up, but on the digital side, it's so easy. You can choose long paths, short paths, random, in order, all these different options to start the game, and I love that. And those are also available in the online play, which we'll talk about in a second as well. But the concept of the game is you want to be the first player to collect five gems. You're going to do that by using your assistants. You'll notice that there are stacks of our characters in each of our colors, and underneath them there are these little discs. Those discs are your assistants. You're going to, on your turn, everyone's going to start the game at the beginning of the game in the fountain, which is in kind of the center-ish area of the uh, board here. When you move, you're going to move one or two spaces. You're going to either leave an assistant disc at that location, or you're going to pick up an assistant disc that you had left in there from a previous turn, and then you can take the action of the location. And one of the things that I really love about the digital edition is that there is a complete tooltip section, especially on the Switch, which is really easy to access. When you go to a location, it's as simple as pushing a button, and it'll give you a full long description of what happens at that location. The other thing that I think is absolutely fabulous and what they've done on the digital edition is that if you are new and I suffered from this when I first played this game in 2014 on the board game side there are a lot of very subtle connection points because there are different strategies to get gems you can upgrade your wheelbarrow or your wagon which determines how much goods you can get uh, and collect when you go to locations. You can buy gems for uh, different resources. You can buy gems by just paying gold. You can get gems by collecting mosque abilities. And there's a lot of different strategies to this game. There's not really one direct line of, this is the best option of what I should do. There's different options that you could say, okay, I'm gonna start with this strategy and maybe like here you'll see we're getting a great mosque. There are two locations. One offers you a blue and yellow. The other offers you a red and green. You use those associated resources to buy them and when you've bought both the blue and the yellow or the red and the green from one location then you get the gem from that location the fun thing about that is you can adjust your strategies based off of what other players are doing if you see one player going after a lot of coins and just trying to buy their way to victory which is possible but takes quite some time you can then adjust and go after a lot more resources and maybe upgrading your wagon or your wheelbarrow which is really kind of cool um, the interesting thing about it though is that it is a I kind of call it a pathway game because again you're on your turn you're moving one or two spaces you can move more with some bonus cards if you have them but you're going to move one or two spaces and then either leave an assistant or pick up a previously left assistant and take the action here you see we're upgrading our wheelbarrow to be able to get more goods when we collect goods 
The interesting thing about that is there's a bit of a chess-like component to the game, and it's one of the things that I have just absolutely fallen in love with about the game overall is that there is a really fulfilling experience to plan out your turns, plan out your steps bit by bit and say, okay, if I do this and then I do this and then I do this, this is what it will net me and what I will achieve. That is just really fulfilling. I mean, just in games in general, it's fulfilling, but in Istanbul, it's even more fulfilling. So I really kind of feel that this is more of a pathway game and, and a planning game, and it very much feels like chess at sometimes in terms of how you're moving. One of the aspects of the game is that if you uh, move your character to a location where another character is, you actually have to pay them gold. So you not only have to plan out what your best optimal pathway is, but you also have to take into account the fact that another player or multiple players may end up on a tile that you want to use, and then you have to use a valuable resource like gold to be able to pay them. Uh, now, if you are ever in a stuck position, you are always able to go back to the fountain and recall all of your assistants, which is kind of nice. You can either choose specific assistants to call back, or you can call them all back in one felt swoop, uh, which is really kind of cool. There are also cards that will let you recall assistance for uh, money, uh, for cash and gold, uh, so those are options as well. Uh, there's a lot of different little bonus cards in the game. Some may just give you gold, some may give you uh, an ability to you know, bring an assistant back, some may allow you to interact with different locations at different times. Just really, really good little options there. Um, but the big thing is that you can take all of this back. And if you are new to the game and you don't know the subtleties and you don't know the timings yet of, oh, I went here, but I had this card and I didn't use it and I could have used it, you'll notice that in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, there is this little B and arrow that says back. If you ever are in your turn, and you are doing an action that doesn't involve you rolling dice, or if you're doing an action that does involve you rolling dice, up until the point of rolling those dice, you can backtrack and retcon your entire turn. It's just the current turn. So, But the interesting thing about that, and what I've learned about playing it, especially on the Switch, is that this helps you become a better player. You can take actions and see, okay, if I do this and I get this, this is where it leaves me, and then my next step can be this, Mm, I don't like that. I'm going to hit the B button and backtrack and take that back. That has really helped me become a better player. Now, transparently, I am phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal at coming in second in this game. If you ever want someone to be your wingman, I am that guy. But uh, I really have felt that having A, access to the tooltips, which are really, really easy to pull up for each location, B, being able to backtrack your turn, and C, not having any time limits to your turn, have been really helpful in making me understand the game better and helping me be more confident in my strategies with the game, which is really cool. Now, there is an online aspect to this as well. You can play online on the Switch. You can also play online with your uh, portable devices, and it is fabulous. You have all the same setup options that you can do at the beginning of the game for do you want to have a random map or do you want to have an in-order map or a short path map. Uh, you connect to your friends. You can play them from wherever, whenever, and man, is that super awesome. There is a very, very fulfilling uh, feeling of launching a game with someone not maybe just in another state if you live in the United States but in a completely different country and being able to enjoy the experience together. Uh, the online element is very clean, it's very smooth. I've not run into any issues at all with the online either on my iPhone or on my Switch uh, and it's done a really good job. So the big question is this, do you get it on your device or do you get it on your Switch? Me personally, I really like the Switch. I feel that while the cost is a little higher, and that's rightfully so since there's more work to go into developing it for the Switch, which I really appreciate. The board game community as a whole on the Switch is growing and growing and with great, absolutely great implementations like this, it's just going to continue to grow. Um, but I really do like the, the bigger screen is a big thing, number one. Uh, being able to put it on your TV is even more awesome. And I know you can, you know, stream your devices to your TV as well, but the Switch is much easier. Um, but the controls are very intuitive. Uh, being able to have it portable on the go wherever you want is awesome. And it's just something that I found overall I like playing board games on my Switch from a tactile perspective more than anything. There's a bit of a tactile experience in playing it on your Switch that a device 
just doesn't give you. And I'm really, really enjoying this version of it. I highly recommend for you to check it out. Again, this is Istanbul by Akram Digital. You can check it out on the Switch or any of your local devices like iOS or Android as well. In the meantime, let us know your thoughts. What do you think of board games on the Switch? What do you think of the actual Istanbul Im implementation on the Switch or other games that Akram Digital has done, which I would highly recommend to check out. They have a lot of them and they're really awesome. Let us know. Leave a comment below on the YouTube channel. Of course, you can always chime in on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram by searching Crits Happen. In the meantime, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Let your friends know what you're watching and what you're enjoying. And we'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment and let us know what you think. This is our first time as a Switch review, so we'll see how it goes. And if there's others you'd like us to do, feel free and leave a comment about that too. And we'll see what we can do and get more of these put together for everybody. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy all of your gem collecting time times inside the beautiful and wonderful world of Akram Digital's Istanbul. Until we see you next time, keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits.